Welcome to r slash using beggars, where a thief gives a store a one-star review because they wouldn't let her steal. Review, one star. I know this is inappropriate, so feel free to have your own opinion. But the entire staff is always so lazy and unprofessional. Here's the inappropriate part. In a time of desperation, I tried to walk out of the store without paying for my groceries. And the manager himself jumped in front of me as I was leaving and just said, That's a lot of stuff. Come with me and I won't call the police. He checked my ID and took my photo, wrote me a trespass, then still called the police and asked for a citation after I complied with everything. I'm 23, trans, and a college student, and I told him I never do anything like this. He then goes on to accuse me of having stolen from them multiple times and misgenders me to the police officer. I try to correct them, and the officer basically tells me to shut up. Then, I was left to explain everything to the police department and now have a court date for no reason. I've been in the system for a year. Homeless shelters. I stole from City Market because I'm a vegan, and the public services in Burlington are more like a tradition than an actual resource. I wasn't having my needs met, and I gave him all of this information that he didn't even respect, and still turned me over to the police. He wasted my time and abused his authority. Everyone there must have known what was happening, and they were just going to let me walk out with a backpack full of groceries just to get me in trouble. F City Market. They're pretentious apes. I wonder if this person also leaves a review of the jail cell. Review. One star. They wouldn't let me leave. Hey, do you still have that unopened food to give away? Hello, yes. I'm located in blank and I'll be home from work at 5, so you're welcome to pick up anytime after that. You said the food is gluten-free, correct? And nothing in your post said I had to pick it up. I was hoping you could use the ingredients and throw something together. I don't have a very big kitchen. I mean, a lot of the food is like ready to eat or super easy to make, so you don't really need a big kitchen. But yeah, a few people have messaged me, so I'm hoping to have someone pick it up by tomorrow. I literally only live 30 minutes away from where you are in blank. I don't have a car. My guests will be here around 6.30 if you can bring it by then. I appreciate it. I don't have an oven. I'll be home at work at 5 until 7 and then I work my other job. Does that window work for you to pick up? I could maybe meet you halfway. I'm not picking up. Did I ever agree to pick it up? I need 4 meals gluten free. I don't have a job at the moment and could use any help I can get. Surely you're not cold hearted enough to turn me away. I'm sorry, you want me to turn the ingredients I'm giving away for free into actual meals? I'm sorry I misunderstood. I'm not a cook. Surely you can follow simple instructions on the back of the box. A couple of the items are ready to make, like pasta, but they're not instant meals. I really don't have the time to turn them into meals. I'm sorry. You're still welcome to have the ingredients. I need two separate courses. I need a spread for six people who are gluten sensitive and then a meal prep for about five days. Do you have bento boxes? Your post said you love helping people, so I'm not sure why you're being such a grunt to someone who needs help. Hello? I'm so sorry, but I can't help you. Have a great night. Effing ugly jerk. How do people like this exist? This guy's insulting someone, demanding free food, that it be cooked, that it be delivered, that it also be gluten free, and despite the fact that they're poor and don't have a job, they're hosting meals for four people? Is this person, like, actually insane? Hey, Blank told me you helped her do her work on effects of exposure to self-harm on social media. And that you did your essay on an experiment you designed yourself to prove the correlation between self-harm posts and suicide on social media. Hey, sorry, but who is this? Yes, I helped her, but the experiment wasn't so much to disprove or prove the correlation. It was an analysis on the matter. Sadly, I don't have the empirical tools yet to prove anything. Okay, I am blank. I think we had the course of blank together. So, do you still have the stuff from Kate and your experiment? Sorry, I don't remember you. That lecture was huge. I don't have Kate's things. Just some notes. Why? Okay, I need help. 
My project is due Tuesday and I have barely anything. I was wondering if you could give me yours. I really need it. You mean as in selling you my project? No way, dude. That's academic fraud. Please, I'm sick. I have depression and it's really hard for me to do things. That's not academic fraud. It's called helping each other out. And no selling. I'm broke. I'm sorry to hear that, but I can't give you my project. I could maybe tutor you. No tutoring. I need it now, please. I'm desperate. Please give it. Please, if you're a good human, you would give it. Lol, you want me to commit academic fraud and won't even pay me for it? Sorry, my final answer is no. Maybe start doing your project now and you can get a passing grade. Wow, you're such a jerk. No wonder Blank rejected you. Jerk, kick my butt. I mean lick. You don't deserve a thing, you hateful jerk. Ruining my life because you feel threatened by me? Duck you. F your brother. F your father. You deserve to be kicked out of the university. I'll tell my professor that you stole my idea. F you. F you. Okay, good luck with that. Have a nice one. Jerk. Grunt. 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 Sorry, didn't mean to blow up. Can you help? Can you come over and help? Now? Sorry, I'm just super stressed. My rates are 20 euros an hour. That's too much. I'll pay you $10 for two hours. Deal? Hello? Answer! Lol, stick that up your butt and pray for a passing grade with that professor. Instead of asking for 20 euros per hour, I would have asked for 20 euros to not immediately send this text conversation to her professor. Still got the Xbox? Yes, I do. My homie hit you up for me. I only got $150. You're in blank? Yup. Would you be able to do $160? No, all I got is $150. Okay, I can do that. When would you like to meet up? After three, if that's fine. Yeah, man, that's fine. You got a time you're good to meet? It's still available if you're interested. I'm down, bro, but I only got $75. We can meet right now. I can't do $75, sorry. I got the cash right now. 150 is the lowest I'll go. I can probably ask my friend to let me borrow 100 bucks. I mean $25, so I can have $100 total. That's the most I can get. Not 100 bucks, the lowest I'll do is 150. Well, let me know, my other homie, the one that hit you up for me, but yeah, sorry man, all I got is $100. I'll meet you right now. I have someone wanting to meet me tomorrow for 150, so I can't take any less. That's the most I can get, man. Sorry, but let me know. Thanks, man. I can't accept $100. Sorry. If you manage to get 150, then let me know. I'll let you know if it's still available, but the price is firm at 150. I'll do 150. You have 150 now? I can meet after 12. Would you like to meet now? Man, can I give you 100 now and 50 tonight? Or can you hold it till tonight? I'll get it for sure. I'll wait till you can give me the 150 up front. Okay. If you have someone trying to come, let's meet. I already sold it for 175. Sorry. All right, got 150, so let me know. I don't have the Xbox anymore. I already sold it for 175. I don't understand, why do so many choosing beggars say, Hey, I've got the cash right here in hand. Like, that's supposed to be some huge selling point? Who cares if you have the cash on hand? You know what's better than $50 cash in hand? $150 cash in hand. So, let me tell you about the woman that demanded to be paid for getting a free ride because there was a girl with cancer in the car. Backstory, this happened when I was studying at a university and living with my parents. Our village is located roughly an hour drive from a big city where most of the neighborhood work, including my mom, her nice friend in the IT department, and the choosing beggar, all employed by the same firm. There's a train to the city in the neighboring village, but it's half an hour walk, so my mother would generally drive to work and I'd tag along whenever our schedules allowed it. Around two months before this story takes place, the choosing beggar realized she could ride to work and back home with my mom. 
And my mother, being the generous person she is, agreed to that, demanding no payment, as it wasn't any major inconvenience for her. And she was aware the choosing beggar was doing a low salary job and had young kids at home. The nice IT friend, let's call her Anne, who was always taking a train home, asked my mother a few days beforehand if she and her daughter could ride home with her on Friday, as her daughter was going to be released from just a routine checkup at the hospital in the city. She also offered to take an early leave so that they'd be ready by the car, but my mom said they'd just go to the hospital together as it's only a 10 minute detour. Come Friday, and surprisingly, I finished my classes early and messaged my mom if I can tag along. My mom says yes, but at the same time explains quickly Anne's situation and that the car will be packed. No problem for me. Five minutes to five I arrive at the parking and I see the choosing beggar waiting already. This woman must never work till the end of her shift. She sees me and gets visibly annoyed saying something along the lines of, Oh, and now this car is going to become a public bus for annoying teenagers. I was in my 20s and rather quiet in the car. I pretend I heard nothing and just wait patiently. Ten minutes later, my mom arrives with Anne and we drive towards the hospital. The checkout must have been busy as we wait for about 20 minutes, but it's fine with me and my mom as it's a special situation. However, the choosing beggar rants about waiting all this time, much to our annoyance. Anne finally shows up and we quickly realize that this was by no means just a checkup. Anne's daughter looks very frail and thin, Face white, bald head, covered with a scarf, barely holding up, clearly just released from chemotherapy. I immediately get off the front seat and go out to grab the daughter's luggage from Anne to place in the trunk and let her take the front as I don't feel comfortable having her crammed up on the back. The choosing beggar is rather a large woman, not like that's anything bad, but there was hardly any room in the back with her and Anne in my mom's city car. Anne quietly thanks me and we roll back home in relative silence as the daughter fell asleep immediately. We go to Anne's home first, it was on the way, and they start leaving quickly. Anne's daughter throws up the moment she wakes up, getting some puke on the car and quickly starts apologizing. We say we don't mind. And there it starts. Anne takes out her wallet and gets a bill that exchanged for about 60 bucks and insists on paying my mom for both the ride and cleaning the car, which my mom quickly declines. However, at the same moment, the choosing beggar reaches for the money. For a moment, everything is silent and then the conversation goes like this. I'll be taking it, thanks. On what grounds? Well, we had to take this huge detour and I'll be like 40 minutes late at home. Well, you would be even later had you taken the train. It's none of your concern. I don't take any trains home. I always ride this car and I'm not just being late. This car has been ruined by Anne's daughter. It's not even your car and we don't mind. I take it every day, so it's mine as well. BS, it's my mom's car and she decides what to do with it. Anyways, that daughter puked here in my close proximity. I'm surely entitled to some damages. Anne said, no, it's right. I'm so sorry. She grabbed the $60, put it in my mother's handbag, and proceeded to take another banknote, around $25, and hands it to choosing beggar who quickly pockets the money. Anne, you shouldn't have given her a thing. She takes a ride with my mom daily and pays us nothing. Oh, I thought she's paying for fuel. As she should have. It doesn't matter. I take this car every day and now I'm covered in some sick girl's vomit. What if my kids catch what she's sick with? The pew got nowhere near her. The daughter shouts in a very raspy voice. I have a brain tumor. It's not contagious. That somehow managed to shut choosing beggar up. My mom got out, took the daughter's luggage and walked Anne and her daughter home, slipping the banknote she was given into their mailbox on the way back. She says nothing and drives straight to Choosing Beggar's home. She'd normally leave her at the crossroads nearby and speaks for the first time in a while. I was driving you because it wasn't inconvenient for me, but it just became a large inconvenience. This partnership is done. I don't care if you take the train from now on. Get your own car or just quit your job. I will not be driving you anywhere unless you or your kids are dying. The $25 you were given for no reason should be enough for a week's worth of train tickets anyway, so enjoy. This car is mine and mine only, so get out now. After that, I hardly saw the choosing beggar at all. Hopefully she's never coming back into the picture, and my mom drives to work with Anne now who, even if nobody asks her to, pays for the fuel. 
Anne's daughter is in remission now, so she's doing much better if you're curious. So as I was reading through this story, when the lady reached for the money, I was completely shocked. I read stories about choosing beggars professionally. It's literally my job. And this lady's sense of entitlement is so insane that I completely didn't see it coming. Here's a clip of me reading that sentence for the very first time and my genuine reaction. Anne takes out her wallet and gets a bill that exchanged for about 60 bucks and insists on paying my mom for both the ride and cleaning the car, which my mom quickly declines. However, at the same moment, the choosing beggar reaches... What the f***? Posted by Sugar Shack Donuts. If your name starts with the letter J, come get a free house donut today. Please go back and do E. It's really unfair to those of us who promise a special treat to our kids. My B kid got one and now my E kid is understandably upset. Yes, I could just go buy one, but she's been really looking forward to her special E name donut. Please, for the E parents here, make it fair. If it's so unfair for parents who promise special treats for their kid, then maybe you shouldn't promise special treats for your kid. <laughs> also, JVABDBE says it best in the comments. I'm here for the free donut. This is my daughter, Jimily. Please read full pose before saying you're interested. I'm in search of a third shift babysitter for my five-year-old son. I live in blank. Interviews will be required. He sleeps pretty well all night. I just need someone there if he wakes up or starts getting sick. I will have a designated area for you to sleep. Or you may stay up all night if you want. I go to work at 9.20 p.m. and I'll be home by 7.30 a.m. I do not need a nanny or maid. He will not sleep at your house. I work Sunday night through Thursday night. I never work Friday nights, but sometimes I do work Saturday nights. You'll get paid weekly and we'll talk about the pay when you message me. If you have any questions or if you're interested, message me. Thanks. Then this is a reply to that post. I responded to this and she wrote back. I'm pretty set on what I'll pay. It's $50 weekly, but if you have to watch him on a Saturday night too, then it'll be $75 a week. Also, this is a five to six day job, not three. I responded, that's $1 an hour. Good luck with finding good, safe, and responsible care for your precious child for 50 bucks a week. That's a dollar an hour. I got more than that in 1979 when I was a teenager with no experience. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Anyone willing to watch your child for $1 an hour is not someone you'd want watching your child. Hi, do you still have that dress? Yes, which one do you want? The blue one or the black one? Both. The dresses are 20 euros each, but if you want to buy both, you can have them for 35 euros. They're one size though. Did you read the description? Does it fit? Uh, yes I have. It's too big. You can fit it for me, right? I can try, but it's just a hobby. I'm not a professional, and that would be another five euros. Five? Uh, I pay for that dress. You should be grateful I take it. It's ugly anyway. You give me the dresses and fit them both, and I'll give you 20 euros. My god, choosing beggars use the dumbest logic. If it's ugly, why do you want it? That was r slash choosing beggars, and if you like this video, then hit that subscribe button because I put out new Reddit videos every single day.